our Lord Jesus Christ came and finished his assignment by shedding his precious blood for the remission of our sins. The present assignment is an entirely different one. That is to establish the new kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. The new heaven and the new earth where righteousness dwells. I have told you that during the colonial era, there were many rules and regulations. If you rode a bicycle without a lantern, you have contravened the law. One person was riding a bicycle in the night and he, car and he carefully hung a lantern on his bicycle without lighting it. He was consequently arrested by the police for riding his bicycle without a lantern. You can see that the law was very flexible. It is for this reason that the laws are always amended. The man who had been arrested told the police that he had been riding his bicycle with a lantern in conformity with the law. Therefore, the people who made the law found that a certain clause in the law needed amendment. So they instituted another law that says that any person who rides a bicycle should have a light or a lantern with light. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. These are the amendments of the law of Moses. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill, except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom mentioned in this statement is brotherhood of the cross and star. The disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ requested him to teach them how to pray. He taught them to say, O oh Father, we art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. This is that kingdom which they had prayed for so many years ago. The question is, who is prepared to enter into this kingdom? This kingdom has nothing to do with sin. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. When our Lord Jesus Christ will appear the second time, he will have no association with sinners. At the moment, you are still calling him a friend of sinners. Do you think that he will come to continue the work of death by associating with the evil ones? Who are those who are really waiting for the second advent of our Lord Jesus Christ? In 2 Peter chapter 3, Verse 14 it reads, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, 
be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blemish. Many of you are not looking for this kingdom. Rather, you are looking for the mundane things which have nothing to do with this kingdom. In this kingdom, only righteousness is expected. Nothing unrighteous will enter into it. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 3, it says, And every man that art this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. How many, of, how many people in the world have prepared themselves for this kingdom? You only come here to joke and play, seeking for only material things, which means that you do not want to enter this kingdom. This thing that you are joking with will become a source of lamentation at the end of this generation. I have often told you that you do not understand the meaning of this kingdom. I have warned you not to compare me with Moses, Melchizedek, Adam, Elijah and Jesus Christ because their assignments were different and had already been completed. I have come to accomplish a new phase which even our Lord Jesus Christ was not able to achieve. That is the establishment of the new kingdom of God and earth. I know the reason why so many people cannot come into brotherhood of the cross and star. I also know why even members of brotherhood of the cross and star cannot restrain completely from sin. It is because your brethren in the church denomination indulge in fornication, preparation of concoction and charms. They fight and quarrel, cause division and glory in vices. Yet they claim that they will go to heaven. When they see you, they regard you as a fellow Christian. For this reason, when you are told not to make concoctions and charm, that you should not drink, you should not smoke, you should not snuff or sue people to court, you feel that you should behave like fellow Christians. It is the same situation that we have in brotherhood. We have different fellowships, like Christ students, Christ servants, the ordained ones, and the elders. A Christ servant is allowed to marry and can live like average brotherhood people. The Christ students are not allowed to marry or be given in marriage. They must be celibate. But now, nobody can see the difference between the Christ students and the average brotherhood person. This is so because most of the Christ students have defiled themselves with men and women. Many people are asking questions as to why the Christ students are not allowed to marry. Are they not also in this kingdom? How many are they not also in this kingdom? Many people also want to know the difference between the ordained ones and the others. Since they are all in the same kingdom, a great deal of people in the world attend spiritual churches, yet they fornicate, they steal, quarrel, call division, prepare concoctions and charms and glory in vices. Have you heard what has been said to you? That when our Lord Jesus Christ will return the second time, he will have no association with sinners. Do the church denomination understand that I have not come to have any share with them at all? It has been clearly stated in the Bible that our Lord Jesus Christ will not have any share with sinners in his second advent. Members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star are to be pitied because they do not 
want to put the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ into practice. Some of them attend parties with members of church denomination. They drink and become intoxicated. The word of God which is prepared to you is a two-edged sword. That is why I am pleading with you to refrain from all manners of sin. The long patience of God should not be regarded as stupidity. Why are people anxiously waiting for the second advent of our Lord Jesus Christ? He came and shed his precious blood to reconcile man with God. He revealed God as love to all human beings. In addition, he performed many miracles. He gave sight to the blind. He raised the dead, cleansed the lepers, and made the dumb to speak. Why do people still want him to come back again? In Philippians chapter 3 verses 20 to 21 it says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. The reason why the whole world is looking for our Lord Jesus Christ is so that he may come and change our vile body from mortality into, mortali into immortality. Since the creation of man, have you ever heard of a person who can change this vile body to the glorious body of Christ? If you are not reformed now, that is to say you must refrain completely from all manner of vices. How will your vile body be changed into the glorious body of Christ? Now that some of you have been completely reformed, what do you think our Lord Jesus Christ will do when he comes back? Peter, Paul and the rest of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ were waiting for this time. That is why Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13, Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heaven and new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Is this a strange language? Where you find people quarreling, fighting, committing fornication, causing division and judging one another. Can you say that righteousness dwells there? When people weep and cry, can you say that they are righteous? Where you find people cursing and abusing one another, saying woe unto you. Woe unto your family or your country. Can you say that this is where righteousness dwells? Brethren, you know that material things are not problem. But our problem is to practice righteousness so that our vile and mortal body might be changed to immortality. Therefore, all those who are looking for him must purify themselves even as he is pure. If you are seeking for a new earth, then you must have love, you must have peace, meekness, temperance, endurance, self-control, humility, tolerance, and the spirit of forgiveness. Who will our Lord Jesus Christ choose as his disciples and who will Rule with him in the second advent. In St. Luke chapter 20 verses 34 to 36 it says, And Jesus answering said unto them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry, nor are given in marriage, 
neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. In the whole world, how many people are prepared to follow our Lord Jesus Christ and comply with these instructions? Many of you dance about professing to be brotherhood. How many of you are prepared to follow our Lord Jesus Christ? Our Lord Jesus Christ had said that those accounted worthy to inherit the new world and the resurrection from the dead neither married nor are given in marriage. I have been preaching to you that a special number of people are required in this new kingdom of God. There are 144,000 virgins. All those who open him have made themselves holy, even as he is holy. How many people think of purifying themselves and making themselves holy, even as he is holy? Since you are waiting for him, you should be perfect without spot or blemish. How many people in the whole world have fulfilled the laid down principles? Inside this new kingdom of God, you are not to indulge in any vice. Do you not see that your thoughts are at variance with the principles of this new kingdom? Some of you want to attain great heights in education. You long to be elected into any of the legislative posts. You want to become a president, a commissioner, minister, or permanent secretary. Some of you want to acquire all the wealth of this world. How many of you stop for a moment and consider entering into this new kingdom of God? Do you know that to be carnally, that to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace? In St. Matthew chapter 14, verse 26 to 27, it reads, if any man come to me and hate not his father, his mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. How many of you are prepared to hate your parents? children and family in order to enter into the new kingdom. Every day you put on your white suit and attend morning and evening prayers. You are not prepared to practice the word of God so that you may have eternal lives. In Revelation chapter 14 verses 3 to 5 it says, And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty four thousand which were redeemed from the earth these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins These are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth were found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Who among you is prepared to comply with this instruction? From where were they redeemed? Are you not on earth? Are you really prepared to be redeemed? No. All of you are now on earth. If after hearing this gospel you comply with it, you have left the world, which means that you are redeemed. In St. Matthew chapter 19, verses 11 to 12, it says, But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, 
says they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there are eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Where do you stand? Are you for this new kingdom of God? Or are you for the world? Are you still maintaining your position in this kingdom with the slogan, as the Father likes it? Do you want to wait until all the people have been selected for this new kingdom of God before your eyes are open? After God has selected the 144,000 virgins, the door will be closed and you will not be able to enter. A fornicator will never enter this kingdom of God. If you like, call the name of the Holy Father, leader, Lumba, Lumba, Boo, 100 times. You will never enter this kingdom of God unless you fulfill these conditions. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 to 34, it says, But I say, brethren, the time is short, it remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. But he that is married cared for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the world. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit but she that is married careth for the things of the world how she may please her husband it is because you do not understand the principles of this new kingdom of god that many of you regard brother of the cross and star as a church a prayer house a school our teaching home, our healing home, in Brother of the Cross and Star, people are divided into different categories. One, those who are prepared to practice the Word of God and live by the Word of God. Two, those who come to attend prayers and later go back to entangle themselves in the things of the world. Three, those who love the word of God but come and spread their, their mats and sleep while the gospel is, being, is going on. Four, those who come to fight and struggle and wait until when it is time for a feast to be shared. Five, those who witnesses the miraculous works of the Holy Spirit personified and come only for fish and bread. When material things are brought before you, you fight and struggle for it. But for spiritual things, you are not prepared to fight and struggle for it. You want to continue with the slogan, as the Father likes it. You want to continue with this slogan until the judgment day, when it will be too late. To change for people from all the nations of the world will come and fill up this new kingdom of God. In Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 26 it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, 
peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9, verses 9 to 11, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. What do you think of these passages which have been read out to you? What is your hope about this new kingdom of God? Every day you go about fornicating, committing adultery and all forms of sin. You go about collecting money from people under false pretense. When you indulge in these things, you do you think that God is a, is a respecter of person? In St. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, it says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful things? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Unless you practice the word of God, there will be no room for you in this new kingdom of God. Have you heard the text read out to you? This is so that you will not complain that you were brought out of the cross and star but did not enter into the kingdom of God. If you are in the brotherhood of the cross and star and yet you fail to practice the word of God, you will not enter into this kingdom. I am shouting and pleading with you that those who indulge in fornication, adultery, stealing, lying, deceit, envying, cunningness, anger, quarreling, fighting, gossiping, snuffing, heresy, lasciviousness, sedition, unrighteousness, mischief, jealousy, cowardice, vindictiveness, Pomposity, division, laziness, covetousness, argument, flippancy, pride, fraud, bullying, murder, insult, rancor, vain thinking, aggravation, whispering, cursing, herbalism, traditional plays, worldly dance, worldly song, swearing by blood, oath, inordinate, lust, and evil concupiscence, both native and English treatments, occult science, burning of incense, of bony society, playing of bands or drums, weeping, frowning of face, sighing, bribery or being bribed, selfishness, beating of children, wife or servant, disobedience and lamenting, Wearing of gold, pearl earrings, necklace, finger rings, piercing of ears, offering people drinks, keeping company with fornicators, mourning, keeping a mourning house, secret societies such as Rosicrucian, Lodge, Abu, Ekpi, Ekpo and others, court actions, backbiting, 
sacrifice being present in worldly society, soothsaying or worldly gathering, eating meat of strangled beasts or meat of animals which die by themselves and such ungodly manners will not enter. Confession of sins. All your sins have been forgiven. All the sins that you have committed from the time of Adam up till now have been forgiven. For this reason, you are all justified before God. I have no business with churches, prayer houses, or service centers. Wherever you meet anyone, tell him or her to confess his or her sins and become truly repentant so that he may avoid the wrath of God to come. This is the era in which the children of God have to judge the people of the world. Whosoever you forgive his sins, his sins are forgiven. Whosoever says he has no sin, his sins will remain with him. Do not behave like the prophets of old who had hope of salvation. In this generation, salvation is nearer to you than the tongue to the teeth. Since all your sins have been forgiven and you have been brought into this new kingdom, so do not go back and be entangled with sins. Wherever you go, ask the people to confess their sins and accept baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As for those who claim to have no sin and are not prepared to accept baptism, pass them by. There is no way of salvation for them. This explains the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ could not do any effective work in his birthplace. Since you have been redeemed from this world of sin, war, poverty and anguish, tribulation and sickness, into this new kingdom of joy, peace, righteousness and holiness, you should not go back to commit sins again. No, all of you have been endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. You have been commissioned to go into all parts of the world. Forgive people of their sins. Do not try to convince anybody to come into brotherhood of the cross and star. Can you see the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ? He had promised to pray the Father to send the Holy Spirit of truth to come and dwell with you. Have you now seen this promise manifested today? He says that you have received the Holy Spirit and whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Why do you complain when you are sent out to preach these good tidings to the world that you have no holy oil, you have no holy water or the power of giving vision? You do not require all these things. All that you need to do is to gather people around you, ask them to kneel down and confess their sins. Then you tell them to go because their sins have been forgiven. When you do this, their sins will be forgiven and all their problems will be solved. When people meet you and confess their sins and are baptized, all their sins are remitted. They have received the Holy Spirit. Pass on from there to another place. Whichever school or church a person belongs to does not matter. Whenever somebody confesses his sins and becomes truly repentant and baptized, then all his sins are forgiven. 
can you now see why a person baptized into the church denomination finds that his troubles and afflictions still remain with him because his sins have not yet been remitted? This is the reason why people jump from one church to another seeking for salvation but all to no avail. This is because the church denominations do not have the Holy Spirit to forgive sins. Whoever wants to experiment on this lecture can do so. Come into the brotherhood of the cross and star as a woeful sinner. Prostrate on the ground. Confess all your sins. Destroy all your idols and secret society books. Withdraw your membership in secret societies or worldly traditions. All sicknesses, afflictions, and suffering will be solved instantly. The mighty work that you witness in the brotherhood of the cross and star are not performed by me. It is the promise of God which is fulfilled in this last generation. We should try to confess our sins always and know that whenever we sin, there is one who makes intercession for us. Brethren, I do not intend to be tedious unto you. Let all those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.